Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. This time, we're going to be looking at a game that I have really fond memories of back in the day. It is a game made by Namco, or at least published by Namco. It was actually made by, um, I forget what the company's called, Black Ops Entertainment. There we go. A company that has an interesting backstory. Uh, this is a game that I very fondly remember um, as a kid. Uh, but interestingly, the more I think about it, I'm pretty sure I only had the demo. A very interesting premise, this game. Anyway, I'm going to be quiet so you can watch the intro. So, welcome to Treasures of the Deep. So it's an underwater um, exploration game, I suppose you could say. Kind of like, uh, think of it as Colony Wars, for instance. Or G-Police, I guess. But underwater, um, you're running your own little private business. And uh, here I'm just going to take a look at the options here. Apparently I've got a save for this, which is curious. Uh, must be pretty old. Uh, the standard difficulty is on novice, by the way. You can change it to expert, but the game does recommend novice. This game is hard. It's very, very hard. Uh, I do remember that. But I'm pretty sure, as I said, as a kid, I only had the demo of this game. And this game has always stuck out in my mind. I played it, and I played it, and I played it, and I played that demo almost an unimaginable amount of times. I knew it inside out. So we have a map screen and we can select our missions. We are a mercenary. And... A brutal hurricane sunk the Spanish galleon Concepcion just off the coast of Puerto Rico. She went down with a wealth of Vatican gold and religious artifacts, making the site a target for underwater pirates. Your dive objective is to retrieve the ruby-studded Vatican cross and destroy all the pirates' cargo stubs. This region is home to the Hammerhead Shark. Use your nets to keep him at bay. Yeah, and we have to take missions and earn money. Uh, this game has a wonderful music score that really does uh, stick in my head. Um, it's one of the things about it that I've never forgotten. The music is quite legendary. Um, this game also got very, very positive reviews when it originally came out in 1997, I believe. Um, so as we go through the game, we obviously earn lots of money because we're basically a treasure hunter. Um, and we can upgrade our submarine. We can upgrade our weapons and our equipment. And yes, we even have the uh, submarine car from... I want to say that's from James Bond. I don't know. I don't really watch a lot of films, but yep. It seems like a James Bond thing to me. Uh, we also have equipment that we can buy and upgrade. And equipment is consumable. And we do... Actually, no. Equipment isn't consumable, I don't think. Uh, or at least not all of it. You can take a supply of it with you. Um, and I think you can just upgrade these things. But my memory might be failing me a little bit here. I know you can get different types of wetsuits and dry suits, which give you protection against the elements, that kind of thing. And more armor, I believe. Uh, so we are going to be fighting pirates and recovering a lost treasure. But this game, actually, from a story perspective, it goes places. Places that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And, uh, yeah, it's a good time. So nets are going to be uh, heavily used. <laughs> These allow us to capture treasure. They allow us to capture animals and all sorts of goodies that we find. We have different types of torpedoes, mines, missiles, all that good stuff, even like plasma weapons. And, and it's kind of crazy. Um, like I say, this game goes places. Uh, torpedoes are incredibly useful. I'm just buying them because we start with 10 grand. 10 grand in this game, by the way, is nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
and equipment is very, very expensive. So, before embarking on a mission, we can pick our loadout. Also, you can only take a set amount of stuff with you. Um, you have a maximum carry weight, and that is dependent on your submarine, uh, I believe. So, the sort of thing that we can uh, expect to do, we have missions like capping underwater oil leaks. We explore shipwrecks, of course. Um, recovering plane crash victims as well. I do kind of remember seeing that in a Let's Play. Uh, and we have a enemy, of course. So this is the gameplay. It controls very much like one of the early 3D space shooter games. Uh, it has a hell of a learning curve. Um, your L and R fire your weapons. Your triggers select equipment and whatnot. Um, I think it's like triangle makes you reverse and X makes you go forwards and circle and square a strafe. So there's, there's a lot going on and it's kind of weighty and heavy. Uh, on every mission, we can capture certain wildlife and fauna uh, for a nice little bit of bank. We've got a map, which you can see there. Um, that points us in the rough direction of our objectives. However, there are plenty of secrets off the beaten path, which is nice. We also have to keep an eye on our oxygen because uh, if our oxygen runs out, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, we can get refills. Our health is also uh, quite important to keep an eye on. And that health, let me tell you, that health drains quickly. So you need to be vigilant. But you do have lives, okay? Uh, which is a little bit odd, but there is a life system. We can find coins. And uh, on every level, there are certain things. Like, for instance, we have lobster traps here. We have green sea turtles, which we can um, grab up. Now, one thing that I didn't show off in this video that I completely forgot about, actually, is you can ride on the back of certain... Um, sea creatures, which is kind of cool. Now, when I first started playing this, uh, I'm extremely rusty with the controls. The controls are difficult, but uh, you'll, you'll notice towards the end of this level, I do start getting to grips with them. So we have enemy divers that attack us. They're pretty weak, but they can be difficult to see because we're in the deep blue ocean and they're wearing blue <laughs> blue um, suits which is is difficult uh, also the draw distance in this game isn't fantastic there are other things amongst the deep to be wary of we have sharks hammerhead sharks specifically on this level uh, there are rays rays don't really hurt you pretty much whatever you capture with your nets you will get paid out for uh, including you can capture the divers and I think they get a small bonus payout for those uh, but some things just genuinely aren't worth the money as you can see the pickups are kind of everywhere I tell you what this reminds me of a little bit actually um, Forsaken yeah there's an old PC game so a bit more about the story Oh, we have a pirate sub here, and I'm just standing here like a jackass, not being able to maneuver. Those big explosions will kill you. So, the story. We're actually playing as a named character called Jack Runyon, and he's a retired SEAL and Gulf War veteran. He now works for an underwater mercenary agency called UMA. Um, now, interesting, there is a main bad guy in this game he's called Simon Black and he's head of the Seismic Corp and uh, you kind of are racing each other to uncover certain things certain artifacts and that does come into a big climax at the end of the game where you have to face off against each other uh, which I believe is in Antarctica funny enough um, you have to face him off with his uh, like really strong PMC. He's got his own little private military corps for reasons, I guess. Now, the company that made this, Black Ops Entertainment, um, they actually went defunct in 2006, sadly. 
Uh, but they did produce a number of games for the uh, N64, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox. And obviously the PlayStation 1. So this was actually the third game they made, uh, which is in 1997. And they just described it as an underwater exploration game where players dive into sunken shipwrecks and uncover treasures. But other notable games that they produced, they also made Knockout Kings. Uh, I'd never played the Knockout Kings, by the way. Um, never got into them. They did Street Hoops, which I never played, and Street Ball. And then some other notable games that they made, Agile, Warrior, Warpath, Jurassic Park, and Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines, funny enough. So they actually shut down in 2006, like I said, um, but they did carry on in, in a manner of speaking. Um, the founder continued using the Black Ops name to develop stock trading apps. Uh, and as far as I know, he's still doing exactly that. They also won an award, an uh, a AIAS award in 2000 for Knockout Kings 2000 which is interesting. Actually won console sports game of the year. So, you know, they were they were pretty pretty good developer, all things considered. But I would like to see if um, a game like this came out these days, how it would go down. I mean, we're literally plundering the depths. We're cutting a bloody, swathy, messy, <laughs> blood-soaked uh, uh, rampage through the oceans capturing anything that moves and blowing up sharks with high explosive torpedoes uh yeah yeah it'd probably be a bit of a hard sell these days but you know it was the 90s the millennium was closing in on us and everything seemed possible now you do get fines if you uh kill too many sea creatures or kill endangered sea creatures and things like that so, the, you know, the game does slap you on the wrist. And you do need your money in this game. I forget whether we can actually replay missions and earn an extra coin. I'm not 100% sure. But these sharks, man, these sharks are giving us one hell of a beating. They're surprisingly durable. Also, these pirate cargo ships... They kind of seem slow and lumbering, and they are. But they've got torpedoes, man. And they know how to use them, let me tell you. Torpedoes are pretty nasty because they do look onto you. And they're very difficult to jink and dodge out the way. It can be done, but it is not easy. Now, these mines as well. You want to be careful of these mines. Because um, they have a hell of a shockwave. And if you're not careful, <laughs> you can kill yourself. Now, obviously, we get killed here, but we have continues. You see? We actually have lives. And the game literally just plonks you back where you left off, which is an interesting mechanic. As I said, I don't know a massive amount about the entirety of the game, apart from the fact that I know it gets extremely hard because I've never really played the full release. Although I've got a save, so maybe. Maybe I, I dabbled in this a while ago. Um, but I have watched an LP of this game. And, yeah, to say that it gets challenging is a huge understatement. Um, it almost borderline uh, unfair in places. But, you know, that was the 90s. That was, you know, it was that awkward 3D transition where um, game, devi uh, game developers were just experimenting with so much stuff and throwing everything at the wall to seeing what stuck. And, you know, that's how we got so many unique and interesting games, like this. So the game's telling us there we can actually dismount our sub, which we can do, um, and we can swim around. Um, problem is you're very weak when you do that and if I remember correctly on top of that uh, you don't have your secondary weapons either you just have your um, spear gun which isn't great and obviously you, you don't have the armored protection and the maneuverability of our little sub either so yeah bear that in mind so your money actually acts as a score 
as well. So, you know, there is a bit of an incentive there for replaying the levels. I'm not 100% sure, like, how to get the most efficient amount of money. I'm guessing money is static, or gold and things like that is statically plotted around the maps. You know, nothing is RNG. So there is only, like, a maximum score you can, you can get. Not sure if you lose anything for dying. Don't seem to. Seems like the game just plunks you straight back where you are. But listen to the music. This music is fantastic. It's so different to anything else you're, you're really going to hear. And it's one thing that even years later, every now and again I'm at work and, you know, your mind casts back. And I still hear this music playing. Uh, um, I'm not sure what the music for the rest of the game's like, if it's all kind of like this, but this is just so <laughs> refreshing to play after the endless sea of boring shooters and, you know, junk that we get these days. It's so fun to dip back into the PS1 library and find something unique. And I've got another unique game coming up next. And that's going to be interesting to play because, again, it's another game that I only had uh, the demo of as a kid. I never played the full release. I do believe about a decade ago I watched an LP of it, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into that one as well. Now, a lot of the fond memories I have of PlayStation 1 games, uh, I only had the demos of them because games were expensive, man. And, uh, you know, getting... I can only speak for myself, of course, but... Getting a brand new game, uh, that didn't happen very often. It happened um, for your birthday, at least for me. It happened on my birthday and it happened on Christmas. We can pick up an extra life there. So when you got a brand new game, you you treasured it. You looked after it. it games feel so much more disposable now, you know, with Game Pass and all this other nonsense, free games given away, you know, there's all there's endless amounts of content to play. As a kid that wasn't that wasn't the case. We had the demo discs and we had, you know, at least the majority of us, we, we got games for special occasions. And we loved them and we milked them and we learned every secret, we learned every everything, you know. We explored every level. Although, you know, sometimes the opposite happened and uh, you got a game that you was really looking forward to and it turned out to be a complete and utter turkey. That did happen. I like the way you were just <laughs> hoisting up an anchor like it's nothing, it's fine. Now, the other thing that we had back then that you don't really have these days, of course, is we have rental shops. So pretty much every week, uh, I spent all my pocket money on renting games, and I played so many games. Um, I played tons and tons of PlayStation games. Um, I think it was only really PlayStation games that we rented, because by the time the PlayStation kind of disappeared into the sunset, and then halfway through the PlayStation 2's life, uh, the rental shop started disappearing. Um, which is interesting. But then I live in a, a, <laughs> a very rural place called Cornwall, so, you know, uh, video games were very niche anyway. It was only really the kids that were playing them, and, you know, there wasn't always a lot of kids, so. I don't remember Dreamcast games ever being rented because the system was so um, niche. Uh, I know PlayStation 2 games and N64 games. Um, our local uh, rental shop actually did those, which was great. And that's how me and my buddy, Rich, played most of our games. And, uh, you know, they were great days, you know. Absolutely fantastic days. Um, but it's kind of weird, like the gaming landscape these days. We're simultaneously in the best gaming time that we've ever had. There's so many games. They're so accessible. But also there's something missing. Um, the large variety of games that we used to have uh, as a kid. I mean, 
Uh, I'm recording this on my birthday, and um, one of my uh, one of the things that I got for my birthday this year of my partner, although I haven't got it yet because it's not released yet. I should be getting it in about uh, about two and a half weeks' time. Um, she bought me the new uh, ROG Ally X, and it's interesting because one of the things that I'm going to be using it for really is just playing these old games because that's where I get the most fun from. You know, dipping back into the old uh, old game libraries. Very few games come out these days that really interest me. Um, you know, I don't care for Assassin's Creed. I'm not really interested in Call of Duty. Like, um, Battlefield, I don't play Battlefield. The only modern games I really play, to be honest with you, are Nintendo games. Uh, Resident Evil. And I suppose a few Microsoft exclusives, I guess, on Game Pass. But it's majority of the games I play these days are indie games. I don't play big, sprawling Japanese RPGs or any RPGs because who's got the time for that? So, uh, yeah, that's what I like about doing this Titan Tri series. I really like it. It gives me an excuse to go back to play some uh, games that I have really fond memories of as a kid. And there's one coming up, another one actually coming up that um, hmm, I'm looking forward to diving back into. I believe it or not, that's an N64 game. Uh, and of course, it gives me the opportunity to check out some games on the PlayStation 1 or, you know, sixth, uh, fifth, sixth, seventh generation that I missed out on. And that was a bunch. It, one thing it did feel like back then is there were so many games coming out all the time. Uh, and that's one thing that doesn't feel the same. Game releases these days feel very, very far and few between. Um, and I know that's not true. You know, we've got more games coming out now than ever. But <laughs> they're all very similar sort of things. You know, um, online looter shooters, which I couldn't give two shits about. Battle Royale games with season passes and um, microtransactions stuffed out the asshole, which again, not interested in. Um, yeah, actual quality games do seem to be a lot rarer. But that's not to say we don't get decent games these days. I'm really looking forward to playing Horizon Zero Dawn again, playing the DLC uh, and the sequel for that, Forbidden West. Um, and Ghosts of uh, Tsushima as well. It's finally come out on PC. I'm looking forward to finally uh, playing that because I've got it, I've, I've borrowed that of a friend actually I've got that sitting on my shelf but it's for the PlayStation 4 and yeah I don't really want to play that game on a on a PS4 when I can play at you know massive resolutions and high frame rates on the PC it's just not going to happen so we are grabbing up some secrets here and we are exploring the map as much as we can I do think there is another secret on this mission that I I Missed, unless I'm thinking of another level because I know you can get off your sub at some point and you can ride a manta ray. Now all these little um, fish, they're just like background dressing props. You can't do anything with those. There's so much treasure. Or at least you think it's so much treasure. It's actually kind of not. But we're going to harvest it all up anyway. Maybe I'll return to this game. Maybe we'll actually do a full Let's Play of this. I'm curious because it's it's one of those games that I've always wanted to do. I'm actually curious to look up how much uh, a physical copy of this game would cost. Should we look it up, see what we can find? I don't know if this is a rare hidden gem. I know when it came out, the reviews for it were incredibly good. You know, this was a well-liked game, but did that translate over into sales? I'm not sure. Because I don't know anybody that had this game as a kid. In fact, I was the only person that I personally knew um, that was even 
slightly interested in it. So let's have a little look. Treasures. Treasures of the Deep. According to Wikipedia, yeah. We don't need to listen to you, right? According to Wikipedia, blah, 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 blah. Let's have a look on eBay. Because I think eBay's a pretty good place, right? Okay. Okay, so, yeah, you know, you're looking at um, 20 to... 20 to 30 pounds for this game, which... I guess that seems reasonable. That's, that's a pretty cheap PlayStation game by today's standards. But, you know, you could just download it and play it because it's not like it's for sale anywhere else. So we have finally found what we're looking for, the wreck of the ship carrying this gilded ruby-studded cross. But, unfortunately for us, it has been protected by a giant manta eel. Manta eel? Is that even a thing? A moray eel. That's it. Um, I don't know why. He's just he's just chilling out in this wreck. I, I kind of feel bad for him. I'm not going to lie. You know, he's happy, man. He's got his own little hidey hole. He's safe. Uh, pretty good time until we turn up and decided to pepper his face with as many... Um, darts as we possibly can and we actually got paid for killing him as well which you know I'm pretty sure we're only bad for this ecosystem but whatever he was guarding our treasure and nothing gets between us and our treasure treasure is life now this is one section where we do have to get off and go and grab our prize. Hey, one for the Vatican. Although, I'm guessing we're going to keep that to ourselves and then sell it on the black market or something. Can't imagine that we'd be returning it. Alright, let's get out of here. And then to end the level, you just go towards the surface. I'm not sure who's picking up all the stuff that we've netted either. I don't know. Not going to pretend to know. Hopefully somebody could. I mean, the bad guys could be scooping up everything. So we made nearly half a million from that. And I don't know if you noticed as well, but when we buy anything, we buy things in gold coins, which <laughs> I like that. The video gameness of it. And we've got a massive vault stash in our um, underwater secret base here, which is quite fun. So as you can see, we could have made like 120k extra to beat the best score, but that's a little bit out of my skill set. For now, of course. Now, this is interesting. There are also shark attack missions, eat anything that moves, where we can actually play as a great white shark. And I didn't know anything about this. I thought this was pretty wicked. Now... I guess we can use this to massively rein in um, the money. Now, depending on what you eat, you get a different amount of coins. Now, one thing is worth mentioning. This shark handles like ass. And I don't mean nice per ass. I mean big, massive, unwieldy ass. And uh, yeah, we, we didn't get a very good score here at all. We, we kind of suffered. But um, <laughs> there's definitely going to be a, a bit of getting used to how this handles. Because it, it kind of does handle like the submarine, but not really. It's really heavy. And it takes a while to uh, for your inputs to register and the, the shark to start turning and stuff like that. I, I'm sure it's something that you can get used to. But it's quite fun to just go around and just eat everything. I don't think we can get killed here. I think it's just a complete timer thing. So anyway, that was my waffle. And uh, yeah, we can eat humpback whales, killer whales, dolphins, seals. Seals are worth more than dolphins, interestingly enough. 
the divers are only worth like 750 which is pittance so yeah that was um my look at treasures of the deep i hope you've enjoyed it guys and uh, let me know what you think of the post commentary i'm thinking about swapping over to post commentary because it's making things a lot easier for me at the moment hey we can go find hitler's gold we're not going to because i'm ending the video here but uh, yeah so thinking about switching over to post commentary i've been doing it ever since i was sick because i couldn't i mean you could probably hear my voice is still shit now uh, like pushing four weeks after the fact um anyway till next time